You don't love me. You, you don't love me. I'm drunk on the phone with my mom, 13. What else do 13-year-olds do? Ten years later, we're sitting around the kitchen table. Mom cracks a joke. Remember that time you got drunk and said all those crazy things? I silently think, remember that time I had to get blackout drunk at age 13 to feel safe expressing my feelings? I keep it to myself. I've learned it's much easier to stay quiet. I look up at my mom and ask, why is the only memory I have of childhood being four years old taken to therapy? I can't remember much from growing up, but I can remember feeling like something was not okay. My unmet needs constantly invalidated with endless trips to the doctors for explanations and fixing. She responds, we always knew there was something wrong with you. Spoken so sincerely as if she's actually helping me. Your mom's name is Catherine Mary? Emma shrieks at the realization. My sister's name was Catherine Mary, spelled the exact same way. Emma had asked God a month earlier to send her a soul sister, and I was delivered right to her door. I don't want to be here. This thought hits me as I drive my scooter home. Not here as in Bali, here as in Earth. I text Emma to share and ask, is there anything you wish you had said to Catherine Mary before she committed suicide? She responds the following morning with a poem she had written. Is it okay to want to die? Every one of her words activating the cells of my body, tears rushing down my face. For the first time ever, I was able to voice my truth. And instead of someone trying to fix me, she just saw me. And in her unconditional acceptance of this beautiful little part of me, I was able to fully accept myself too. And just like that, freedom was found from within. My shoe looks like it's moving. That's weird. Shoes don't normally move. I get out of bed, it's 5 a.m., and I see there's a snake crawling across my room. Snakes had always been my favorite animal, but something about being on the other side of the world made the whole experience a bit unsettling. We've never seen a snake here before the owner of my villa proclaims as he comes in to save the day. One year later, Tavishi reaches out to me. As she plops down on the couch next to me, she looks up with a sparkle in her eye. Alexa, it's so weird. 
Last night, there was a snake in my villa. And it's especially crazy because the owner said they've never seen a snake there before. Full body chills. Soul sisters. She had wanted to connect deeper with her sexuality and femininity. As she lays on the floor of my villa and breathes, I place my hands on her chest, on her heart. I ask her to connect with her body, her fears, the feelings that she can feel arising. And from there she speaks. She says, one of the reasons why I'm so afraid to move to the United States is because I'm afraid men won't be attracted to me. I'm surrounded by all these white alpha males who are only attracted to a stereotypical looking white woman and with this brown skin, what if no one likes me? I keep my hand on her chest as I respond. Of course, of course you're scared. Of course, it makes so much sense given that you're surrounded by all this messaging of what beauty is and isn't, of course you're scared to move to the United States. Relief washes over her body. She says, wow. I never knew how good it could feel to just be validated for my feelings. Every other time I've shared that with another woman, she's just responded, but you're so pretty. It feels so good to just be seen. In that moment, I realized there was never anything wrong with me. I never needed fixing. I just needed acceptance, love, and to be seen. (laughs) 